Hello, everyone, and welcome to our morning prayer and worship. Psalm 76, verse 4 says, Glorious are you, more majestic than the mountains full of prey. You know, when we sing songs of praise and adoration to God, we don't just sing positive words. We are singing and worshiping our glorious and awesome God, the God who is more majestic than even the fiercest of all creation. So as we sing this morning, let us remember that it is to a great and mighty God that we sing and give our worship. Ang wika mo, lahat ng pinangako mo. Ang tangi ko, pinanghahawakan. Magpagman, paglipas ng panahon. Ikaw pa rin, ang siyang magahari. Salita mo ay mangyayari Ang iyong hangari Ang siyang mananay Buong puso kami umasa Tapat mong uwi ka Hindi mayayani Buong puso kami umasa oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Magbagman Paglipas ng panahon Ikaw pa rin ang siyang magahari. Salita mo ay mangyayari. Ang iyong hangari, ang siyang mananay. Buong puso kami umasa. Tapat mong uwi ka, hindi mayayani. Buong puso kami umasa. Come 
damay kami sa iyo'y magwawagi. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lord, that you are our unchanging God. And because you are unchanging, our lives can always remain on solid ground. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Pinupuri ka namin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, today, we will go through Psalm 76. Uh, let's read all 12 verses together. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. His abode has been established in Salem, his dwelling place in Zion. There he broke the flashing arrows, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. Glorious are you, more majestic than the mountains full of prey. The stout-hearted were stripped of their spoil. They sank into sleep, All the men of war were unable to use their hands. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both rider and horse lay stunned. But you, you are to be feared. Who can stand before you when once your anger is roused? From the heavens you uttered judgment. The earth feared and was still. When God arose to establish judgment, to save all the humble of the earth, surely the wrath of man shall praise you. The remnant of wrath you will put on like a belt. Make your vows to the Lord your God and perform them. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is to be feared, who cuts off the spirit of princes, who is to be feared by the kings of the earth. You know, this psalm is a song that the Israelites sang as a celebration of God's invincible power. Uh, there's an ancient tradition that points to the psalm as being written specifically after God destroyed an invading army in Jerusalem. That's in 2 Kings. Well, whether it was specific to that event or not, it is a psalm celebra celebrating the occasion of God's deliverance of the royal city from invading forces. They say the congregations that would sing this hymn end up marveling at the privilege of being able to go to Mount Zion to worship God and will thank God for it. Now, Psalm 76, together with Psalm 75, is in the middle of the third book of Psalms. And it is basically a prayer that expresses joy at the assurance of God's presence and deliverance. It is divided in four stanzas, the main theme of which you can find in the opening and closing stanzas. These verses sandwich two others that contain praise addressed to God. Now, here are a couple of insights on this psalm. In verses 1 and 2, Uh, it says, let me read that to you. Sorry about that. Okay. Verses 1 and 2, it says, In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. His abode has been established in Salem. His dwelling place in Zion. These verses show us that this great God, the maker of heaven and earth, has chosen to make his dwelling in Zion. He has chosen a place for his presence. Of course, God and His presence cannot be confined. And the Bible, when we read the Bible, the Bible is very clear on that. However, when God chose Mount Zion as His dwelling place, it meant that it was the means through which the Israelites, or His chosen people, had access to His presence. God was giving them that. And now, you know, we are now God's chosen people by virtue of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. 
and God has chosen to make his dwelling among us. The very presence of God is now something we have access to. You see, when the psalmist wrote the psalm and used the Hebrew word for abode and dwelling place, part of the meaning of the words uh, meant lair or like a lion's den. Yes, it was it figurat figuratively meant a place for community dwelling. Yet somehow it also showed you a picture of a lion overpowering its prey. A lion ready to pounce on invading forces. So the place was a shelter, yes, but it wasn't just that. It was a place that meant protection. And when you have that kind of protection, you know you have that sense of calm, that sense of assurance that things will be well. When you're a defenseless creature in the lion's den and the lion is your protector, there's nothing that could move you because you know you're in good hands. That's what the presence of God brings into our lives. God's presence it is what gives us the sense of calm, knowing that He is the one fighting for us. You know, that's why when congregations sing this hymn, it evoked in them a sense of awe and they marvel at the presence of God. They worshiped in gratitude because now they understood they already have a place of refuge. And that place of refuge is in God's presence. Yeah, it's the same for us. Whatever we're facing, let's remember that He is the God. He is the God who fights for us. We are not to fight our battles alone. Now let's make the presence of God our hiding place. Because in there, we will find our refuge. This psalm ends with these three verses. In verses 10 to 12, it says, Surely the wrath of man shall praise you. The remnant of wrath you will put on like a belt. Make your vows to the Lord your God and perform them. Let all around him bring gifts to him who is to be feared, who cuts off the spirit of princes, who is to be feared by the kings of the earth. You know, these verses close the theme of the song. It began with the presence of God in Mount Zion and how God has chosen it as his dwelling. And as such, how God protected that place and in essence, his people from invading armies. Now it ends giving a summary of how the schemes, even the schemes of unjust men end up bringing praise to God. You see friends, no matter what you see around you, things and events that make you wonder about God's hand, God is still in control. All these will in the end bring praise to God. That's what the psalmist was saying. And because of this, we who are his children should rightfully uh, respond by worshiping and loving him. The psalmist calls him the God who is to be feared. And when we talk about fearing God, there's actually, there's actually two sides to it. One for his children and the others for those who do not know him. As his children, we are to fear God with a love that reveres and honors him. And because we know him, his powerful might and presence that provide protection upon his people, we are to accord him the honor that is due his name. Now, those who do not know him should fear him because he is the ultimate judge. Verse 12 says, he cuts off the spirit of princes and he is to be feared by the kings of the earth. It is scary to be on the other side and be the object of God's wrath and anger. And when you think about it, God is so powerful and mighty. He can actually eliminate anyone with a click of a finger. And yet, there is a preferential love God has for us, His children. That's why as we realize who He is and how His presence alone can thwart the enemy and see how He cares for His children, we have no other recourse but to praise and worship Him. Yes, we will entrust our cares and burdens unto Him. But more than that, we will worship and praise Him. The God who dwells among us is the only one who deserves all our praise and adoration. And as we continually live lives that's built on the fear of the Lord, I believe we will also continue to experience the protection and the sense of calm that God's indwelling presence provides for His children. So whatever it is you are facing today, run to God, dwell in His presence, and come out having the sense of assurance that you can face anything and know He will fight for you. Why don't we end this time in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you 
Thank you, Lord God, for your love for us, your children. Thank you for your presence that gives us the calm that we need. Every time we are in your presence, we feel the comfort. We feel that sense, Lord, of uh, calm and peace, knowing that you will fight our battles for us. And Lord, I pray for your children listening in on this morning devotion. I pray that you would give them a desire, Lord God, to dwell more and more in your presence, that they may come out of it change and confident that you are the God deserving of all our praise and adoration. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Well, thank you for being with us this morning. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. And as we uh, go our separate ways, let me speak this blessing of God upon every one of us. From Numbers chapter 6, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.